Amen, amen. Thank you. Be seated. Man, did you enjoy that? Wow, that was amazing. I give the Lord a hand on that. I'll tell you what, it is, it is fun to be in church with y'all. Amen? It is great, great, great to be here with all of you this morning. Today I'm going to be continuing on with Connecting to Serve in 2021. That has been the theme of, of this year. That's what we're focusing on is being able to serve God, connect to each other, connect to Him. As I've said earlier in the first couple of months, though, the connecting to serve, connecting to Him is priority. That's number one. That nothing else matters if we're not connected to God. That's the vertical connection. The horizontal connection, as we've been looking at now, is connecting to serve in the church, connecting to the church. And so we're going to be looking today uh, with, the, with the idea of about the church and what it is that we do. And basically, the, the title is just, Why Church? When we talk about being connected to the church, why? Why the church? Why not other things? Why not by ourselves? Why not just whatever we want to do? Why the church? We're going to be looking today in the book of Psalm 22. We're going to be looking at verse 22. Now, whenever I look at this, this Psalm, Psalm 22, <clears throat> folks, I want to encourage you, as I did in the first service, I want to encourage you to go back and read the entire 22nd Psalm. This is a messianic psalm that, that I promise you will blow your mind. As a matter of fact, I, I was praying, Lord, it'd be great if you'd let me preach the whole chapter. But the Lord said, no, I want you to focus on this because he also knew you don't have enough time for me to preach on this one today. Amen. I haven't made, I haven't made uh, due time with Patrick to say, let's share a little more time for me to preach because this would take us for a while. But we're going to be looking at this one because this is, this is such an amazing Psalm. As a matter of fact, if you read Psalm 22, you are going to find it very, very familiar with a lot of things in the New Testament, especially the cross. When you read this, you're going to hear a lot of things that Jesus said while he was on the cross. And that's what makes this psalm such a special psalm. As a matter of fact, as we look at this, we, uh, we find out that Charles Spurgeon, when he was talking about this psalm, when he was talking about this chapter... He said that, that we should read this reverently, putting off our shoes from our feet, as Moses did at the burning bush. For if there be holy ground anywhere in Scripture, it is in this psalm. And it even begins in the very first verse of chapter 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And so as, we, as you were to read this, you, you are going to just be blown away. At what, how Jesus was portrayed here and what he was going to say and what he actually said while he was hanging on the cross. This psalm basically covers an area of the, de the, the, the that depicts the suffering of the cross with the glory that follows. In verse 22, where we're going to look at right now, is now depicting the glory that follows. It's the attitude that Jesus was going to have. It's the attitude that I believe he wants us in the church to have. Last week I shared with you how important attitude is, amen? That a positive attitude, it's good to have a good attitude, and our attitudes affect how we view things, uh, how we act around things, how we react to certain things. And so our attitude of the church fits perfectly right here. And this is what we're looking at today is, again, just answering the question, why the church? Why church? Why do we need to be connected to the church? And what attitude should we have about it? I want you to take your Bibles and look then at the book of Psalm 22, starting at verse, we'll just read verse 22, just a simple reading, but let's go ahead and stand in honor of reading his word this morning. The psalmist said here, and these are the words of Jesus as well, I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. Father, we thank you for today and thank you for the blessings you've given us, for the opportunity to gather here again this morning. And Father, man, what, what an amazing time of praise and worship we had. And Lord, it, it's been fun to be here today. And I pray, Father, that you would now take this time that I'm going to be standing here. And Lord, make it uh, effective to, to what you want to happen. Lord, I pray that the words that I'm about to say will not be my words, but God, they'll be your words. I pray that the message that I'm about to preach is not my message, but the one that you have laid on my heart to give. 
And then, Father, at the end, the response would be not even as I want the response to be, but, Father, as you want it. Father, we thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Please be seated. So we look in this text here, and basically we have the reason of why church? Why, why here? Why at this time? Why do we gather in this building? And Jesus, is, as he is coming off the cross, as he begins to speak, and we see here the glory of the cross is beginning to be revealed. And this is what Jesus said, is that we are to come here today to declare his name. Amen? That wonderful name of Jesus. Do you realize that's what we've been doing this past 30 minutes? Is we've been declaring his name in song. Listen, I think a lot of times we kind of miss the attitude of what this time is for. What the praise and worship time is for. There's a lot of people, and listen to me. I'm here to tell you there's a lot of pastors who feel this way. Is that the praise and worship time is just the warm up. That's the warm-up for the main event, and the pastor's the main event. The message is the main thing, the main thing. Listen, I don't view it that way. I believe that it's all together. I believe that they, that they both are vital and important to the whole spirit of the church. And so what you've been doing is you've been declaring the name of Jesus. Because Jesus, man, what an amazing name that is, amen? He is the one who deserves all the praise and all the glory. So everything we do is to declare his name. The Bible says that we celebrate his name. His name, not our name, not the name of the church, not your name, not your family name. It is to declare the name of Jesus because, again, his name is an amazing name. In Philippians 2.9, it says, Wherefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name above every name. Listen, there's not a name that matters past the name of Jesus. Amen? Because the Bible goes on and says that nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no name given under heaven to men by which we can be saved. So that's why we come in here today, and that's what this is all about. Why church? Because we get to celebrate Jesus. Okay, let me say that again. We come in here to church because a day like today, we get to celebrate Jesus. All right, there you go. There you go. Hey, it would have been all right to clap on that one too. Because that's what we're here. That's what this morning is all about. We're here to celebrate Jesus because it's his name. And this is the most ex excellent method, method of showing thankfulness for our deliverance. This is why we're here. Folks, can I tell you today, let me let you in on something. You and I, today, we have a reason to celebrate. Amen? If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have a very big reason to celebrate. And listen, it doesn't matter what's going on in your life today. I know some of you have walked in here. Some of you may be at home, and you have some struggles today. Man, you, you've, the world has been pounding you. You might have been experiencing loss, struggles, loneliness, whatever it is. But I'm here to tell you that because of the name that is above all names, that the name that was given to us for salvation, his name is Jesus. And because that I have him in my life, I have eternal life. And folks, listen to me. We have a reason and to celebrate. As a matter of fact, every Sunday morning when you and I walk into this place, every Sunday morning when you join in with us, wherever you may be, listen, we are coming in for a celebration. Amen? Let me say it again. We are coming in for a celebration. As a matter of fact, I told them in the first service, hey, this is just one giant party we have every Sunday. Amen? Because we have a party going on. It's okay to have fun. It's okay to be excited. It's okay to declare the name of Jesus. Because he is a wonderful man. His name is wonderful. He is above all things. And so when we walk into this place, we ought to be ready to walk into a celebration, not a funeral. Amen. It's okay to, to sing loud. It's okay to raise a hand. It's okay to say amen. It's okay to get ourselves wrapped into this party that we get to have every Sunday. As a matter of fact, I, I, I shared with them earlier, I love having two services. Someone asked me, said, don't you get tired preaching two services? And I said, yeah, but I don't get tired of it. As a matter of fact, the reason I like it is because I get to party twice. Some of you four people, you only come to one service. You only get to do it once. The praise team and I, we get to do it twice. Now, we used to kind of have, we had to kind of come to an understanding because the praise team would always, well, why do we have to sit through two of them? I said, well, I sit through y'all twice. 
Amen? And I say different stories in different words. They sing the same words. But hey, we're having a party, amen? So the praise him and I, we get to do it twice. And I look forward to my Sundays. I look forward to doing it two times. Because this is exciting to me. Because I realize that I want to declare the name of Jesus that is above all names. That is the only name that we can have. Salvation. I love being here with you. Because we not only get to celebrate his name, but you know what else we get to do? We get to celebrate him. Celebrating him. Because his name means something. Because we celebrate him because we celebrate the character of God. That's an amazing character. Amen? That is something that is there because of the love that he has, because of, of all the, 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 the attention that he gives us. Man, we get to celebrate his character, the character that has absolutely no flaws, that has nothing against it. The Bible tells us that there is no evil in God. There is not one piece of bad in God. My friends, that's his character, and we get to come together today, and we celebrate his character. But not only do we celebrate his character, whoo, we get to celebrate his power. The power that spoke the world into existence. The power that holds it all together. The power that, that, that allowed Jesus to die on the cross, be buried in a tomb, and then listen, three days later be resurrected. Folks, that's amazing power, amen? But listen, the reason that it even makes it more special that we get to celebrate it is because that very same resurrection power has now been given to us. That same power. He says, all my power I give to you. We are overcoming. We can even overcome death. There's not anything in this world that we have to be afraid of. There's not anything in this world we have to run away from. There's nothing in this world that we cannot proclaim the name of Jesus to. Because he has all the power. And greater is he that is in me than he that is living in this world. Greater is he that's living in you than he that's living in this world. My friends, we get to celebrate the power of Jesus working in us today. Amen. We get to celebrate that power, but not only his power, oh, but here's something even amazing to me, his faithfulness. You and I get to celebrate his faithfulness because you know what? He has, prom he has told us that he who makes this promise is faithful. That means he's not going to be or he may be, but he is absolutely faithful. All of his promises are yes. All of his things, the, the faithfulness that he has, he will never leave us nor forsake us no matter what's going on in our lives. And we get to celebrate that there's an assurance in the name of Jesus, my friends. Now listen, we may doubt this world and you better doubt the world, amen? Because we don't know what's going on. I don't know what's happening next. I don't, I don't want to put all my faith even in the church. Because the Bible tells us that one day, and we're talking about it on Sunday night, that there's going to be a falling away from the church. I don't want to put my faith in that. But, oh, listen, God is always, always faithful. And if he has been faithful, and he is faithful now, he will be faithful in the future. So you and I get to come in here today with an assurance, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a work in you will continue it. He's not going to let it up. He's not going to let it go. He is working in us today. Folks, listen to me. I don't know about you, but that's pretty exciting. Amen? That you and I get to have confidence in, in, in the one who created this world and the one who has all the power, and he's faithful to us. We're never going to have to doubt him. Wow, that's good stuff, not just because I said it, amen. That's good stuff because it's real and it works. So we see that we are to declare his name. But the second part of that text is that we are to declare his name to my brethren, to, to our brethren, to each other. As a matter of fact, even when Jesus was hanging on the cross, he wasn't concerned about himself, he was concerned about others as a matter of fact he said father forgive them for they do not know what they're doing then as a matter of fact when he was resurrected one of the first things he said is go tell my brethren i want to meet with them amen now listen he was about to ascend to heaven he was about to sit at the right the right side of god he's going back where he came from man i'm telling you y'all better be glad i wasn't him because i'd have been more worried about that than y'all but I, he's more faithful than I am. And he said, even with that all on his mind, he said, go 
tell my brethren I want to meet with them in this place. I want to declare the name of God to my brethren. My friends, that's what he wants us to do. That we are unified. Do you know that we are brothers in Christ? We are sisters in Christ. We are all one together. We're all one big family. Amen? Because we're unified by the Spirit. Now, that's, that's even deeper than, than blood. That's even deeper than biology. We got the same Spirit flowing through us. And as a, as a result of that, you and I are brothers and sisters. Amen? We're family. Hey, family, family's cool. Amen? But now listen. I know also that the part of this, family is sometimes tough. Amen? It's sometimes tough with family. As a matter of fact, uh, we all kind of have some of those family members that we think are kind of weird. Amen? Don't look at anybody. Look at me. All right? And we think that they're kind of odd. As a matter of fact, you may even be thinking, well, I don't know anybody in my family that's odd. Well, someone once said, if you, you, everybody's got somebody, and if you can't figure out who it is, it's probably you. Amen? But in this thing called family, it's an amazing thing. But it's also, sometimes there's difficulties in family. Amen? But you know what? At the end of the day, we're still family. So no matter what goes on, no matter how we might feel, no matter what is happening in our lives, that we may have the, we're not all going to agree on every aspect of life because we're family. But at the end of the day, my friends, we are family. Why? Because the Bible tells us in John 1, 12, But as many as received him, to him, he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. So we're all children of God. And as a matter of fact, since we're all children of God, we're all family. We're all brothers and sisters because we have the same dad. Amen? We have the same dad. So we are, he says, our concern, our concern, another reason why we come to church, why the church? Because we want to declare his name to our brethren because we ought to be concerned about our brethren. We ought to be wanting to be together. We ought to want to spend that time together because we're all children of God, which makes us, again, brothers and sisters. But not only do we come and declare it and and we're, we're united by the Spirit, but guess what? We're also growing together. Why church? Because it's in the church, it's the way that we're going to grow. Because when we're around each other, we we grow. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that we're growing, and the way we do it is for refining one another. We sharpen each other. We help each other. We we guide each other. We we, we strengthen each other. Sometimes we kind of rub each other. Sometimes it's the right way. Sometimes it's the wrong way. But we're refining. We're knocking off those, 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 that dross that, that is of no good. And by being in together in the church... We're refining one another. We're growing as we're here. We're also helping. We ought to have a desire in this place and in our hearts to help each other, to be there for one another, to encourage each other through this thing. And so we ought to be there to help. We ought to, we ought to be caring. What's going on in your life? We talked about it a little bit last week, about how we are to know each other, and we ought to want to help one another. But not only growing together, but we also pray for each other. Man, we come together and we ought to be so concerned about each other that we're willing to pray. Pray for each other. Pray that God would strengthen them. Pray that God would encourage them. Pray that God would guide them. Pray that God would instill in them a peace. Pray that God would give them direction. Pray for each other. That's why we come together. Now, if you're a regular member here, you're a regular tender or a member, you know that every once in a while you'll get a letter from me that says, hey, I've counted an honor to be praying for you. And you get one of those letters. Do you know what? I'm, I'm really, I really am not kidding on that. Now, I don't necessarily type every letter, but I want you to know I sign every letter. Amen. My ladies put them together. I sign them and we send them out to you. And what is thrilling to my heart is every now and then, I will get something back, says, Pastor, thank you for praying for me. Here's what I would like for you to pray for. Now, I tell you, I love that because it it really encourages me, really helps me to know that there's something absolutely specific that I can pray for you about. Now, listen, I'm going to pray for you whether you send something back or not. Amen? I got your name on a card, and 
the only way that I'm not going to pray for you, well, there's no way I'm not going to pray for you. Even if you tell me not to pray for you, I'm going to pray for you. Amen? Because I love it, but it really is encouraging when, when people respond. Someone once said, yeah, if you talk about that, then you're going to get a whole, you're going to be inundated with requests. You know what I say? Bring them on. Send them to me. Because I hear people say, well, now, Pastor, I know you probably got enough to do. You got enough to pray about. No. I want to pray for you. And you know what? You ought to want to pray for me. We ought to want to pray for each other. That's how we grow. Amen. He said, Lord, I want to declare your name to my brethren because I want them to pray. But also for encouraging. We come together for encouragement. It's, hey, it's good to see you all on Sunday morning. Amen. Patrick, isn't it good to have people that sing along and sing loud? Man, that's encouraging. It's encouraging when I look out here and see you. It's encouraging when I see you walk in. That's why I love standing out at the front door. Man, I love watching people come to church. It just encourages me. It doesn't build up my ego because I know you're not coming for me. And I'm okay with you. Hey, that'd be a good place to say amen. All right? I don't want you coming for me. I want you to get something from me, but I want you coming for me. But it does my heart good, man. It's encouraging. And I hope it encourages you. When you send them, you turn around and you talk to each other. I will declare your name to my brethren so that we might grow together because we're unified in spirit. Which now brings me to this. I'm going to give another shameless plug very quickly. We just talked about how we need each other, how we need the group. Because folks, listen to me. We need the Christian community. You and I need each other. Well, we're, we're, we're going to have this summer, these summer groups to pick up starting in, in, in June. Man, I, at, the end of the, at the end of the service last week, I was really encouraged. I had several people come up and say, man, I'd be interested in one of those. Man, I got, oh, yeah, thank you, Lord. So I want to encourage you today. Maybe God's speaking to your heart to either le- uh, help facilitate one or maybe you, you want to be a part of one. Man, we're going to be starting those up because, friends, can I tell you, we need to be together declaring the name of Jesus to one another. You and I, we need each other. The Christian community needs each other. Man, especially the Bible says in the last days. As the days get closer, we're going to need each other more desperately. We're going to need each other. The last one. In the midst of the assembly. Now, folks, I, the last time I noticed, I couldn't assemb- have an assembly by myself. Sometimes I talk to myself a lot. Sometimes many of you may be talking to yourself a lot, but that really doesn't count as an assembly. An assembly is when we gather together, because I want you to know something, that the idea of the midst of the assembly, when we look at this, we see then that the, the, this gratitude demands the most public proclamation. In other words, what Jesus Christ has done for me, I should not want to keep it to myself. I should not want to sit in my room every day and only proclaim the name of Jesus to myself. I ought to want to give it because you know what? He's done amazing things for me. Do you realize that Jesus Christ died for you? And do you realize that apart from him, we have no hope? And with him, because of all the great things God has done, he sacrificed him on the cross. He resurrected him after three days. And he, that same Jesus is coming again. Do you realize, my friends, we should be very thankful. One more time. Because of all that Jesus did for you and I, we should be very thankful. Amen. Man, we ought to want to declare it. Declare it out loud in the assembly. That's what we were doing this morning as you gather together and sing. Man, you were declaring the name of Jesus to the assembly. Because he deserves, man, he doesn't deserve us to keep our mouths shut. He deserves us to be screaming from the highest points of all the things that he's done for me. And all the things that he's done for you. The Bible tells us, and do not be drunk with wine which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing, making melody in your heart to the Lord. That says that we come together, man, we ought to be singing these praises. We ought to be encouraging each other, singing hymns to one another. Again, that's what we were doing earlier in our services because our gratitude should demand us To shout it out. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in Psalm 107, verse 2, let the redeemed say so. Let people know that we're redeemed. It goes on to say, 
to whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Why should we say something? Why should we shout it out loud? Why should we show our gratitude? Why should the Bible tell us to say so? Because we, you and I, if we have Jesus in our life, listen, we have been snatched from the hand of the enemy. And he has no more power over us. There is now, therefore, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. We are not condemned. We are saved individuals. And we ought to be shouting it out to the world. Let them know, the Bible says, continually be ready to give the reason for the hope that's in you. Folks, can I tell you, with Jesus Christ, you have hope. And the Bible says, folks, say it. Say so. Let the world say, let the world know what we have in our hearts. And then the other reason that we come together is, my friend, there's something powerful that happens when we assemble together. It may not happen for every individual because not every individual is connected. But can I tell you, there is never a time, listen, there is never a time that we assemble together that something powerful doesn't happen. Somebody in here today, somebody in here is going to get something amazing out of this. Some of us may sit here and go, well, it's just about time. His time's up. Man, that five minutes is going to last forever here. But I'm here to tell you, somebody's getting something. You know how I know? Because the Bible says in Matthew 18, 20, Jesus says, for where two or more are gathered in my name, there, listen, there will I be in the midst of them. And man, I'm telling you, when Jesus is in the midst, nothing but good is going to take place. Something powerful is going to happen when we gather together in his name. He is going to do something. Now, it may not be that I receive it, but I'm telling you something good is happening right here, right now. Somebody's life is being impacted. Somebody's heart is being encouraged. Somebody's life is being changed right now, whether it's here or at home. Somebody, somebody's life is changing because Jesus is in the midst of this place. So that's why powerful things happen when God's people come together. Man, you look in the New Testament, there were lots of times when they'd get together, the Bible says that even the grounds would shake. There may not be any ground shaking, but in here today, oh boy, wouldn't it be great though if there was? Probably scare half of us to death. But if there was, maybe it's not the ground out here, but maybe it's the ground in here. Maybe it's that foundation that you're standing on is getting a little bit shaken up today. And you're realizing maybe, you're, you're, maybe that's that foundation is not a great one. Maybe you need to find that new foundation, which is Jesus Christ. But my friends, every time we're gathered together, something good and amazing happens. Because it's good to be here. Now listen. It's great that we have the technology and we have the men and women who can pay for this but also have know how to get it out that we have technology that we can send out our services. Amen. Man, praise God that we get reports all the time of people who are listening to our services and we want you to stay tuned in with us, man, and watch us. But I'm here to tell you, it's not like being here. A couple weeks ago, if you'll remember, you may have already forgotten, but I wasn't here. Amen. Amen. Y'all remember that? Please say you do or you remember I wasn't here. Please do that, okay? Don't hurt my feelings. But you know, I wasn't here. I didn't get to be a part of the service, but man, I know the service went well, and I know that the brother Troy did an amazing job preaching the message. You know how I know? Because on the way home, as I shared with you, my wife and I, we, we, uh, we were a few hours behind y'all, but we pulled it up. We pulled the service up. Man, it was great to be able to do that because we worshiped it with y'all on the way home. Y'all had already gone home and had your lunch, about ready for dinner, but uh, we were on our way, but we got to worship. Man, we got to, got to sing along with y'all, and it was great. We got to hear Brother Troy give a message, and it was great. But can I tell you, it really wasn't like sitting in here. Man, it was great to be a part of that worship service. And I'm glad you're tuning in with this. But folks, listen, I, I missed it by not being in this room. There's something goes on in the church, in this assembly, that God uses in a great way. So Jesus said, I will declare your name to my brethren. 
In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. Why church? Why here? Why, why do we need to be connected to the church? Because this is what Jesus' focus was on. Even on the cross, his focus was on this place. And his focus was on his brethren. So our attitude ought to be, this is the place. Because of what we get to do. Now I hear a lot of people, and I'm going to close with this. I hear a lot of people say, well, preacher, we, I can have church and worship on the riverbank. Oh, you can, but you can't do it like we're doing it. You can't do it in the midst of the assembly. Because I promise you, you start preaching and singing and carrying on loud on the riverbank and there's other fishermen out there, you know what they're going to do? Shut up! You get up 7 o'clock in the morning in your campground and you start singing and praising, you know what the people are going to do? Stop it! Call them the cops! But again, there's something special here. Why church? Because we get to declare, celebrate the name of Jesus with the brothers and sisters in the assembly of this place, in the large group where good things happen every single time. It's just, are we receiving it? Because I'm here to tell you again, somebody somebody's walking out of here changed today. Somebody's turning off the TV changed today. Well, how do I know? Because where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst of them. Good things are happening today. And I don't want to miss it. But I love declaring the name of Jesus to you, my brothers and sisters. And I love assembling together. Why? Because it was important to Jesus. He said it right here. So it ought to be important to us. I'd like you to bow your head as we step into this invitation time. Man, what a great time this is about to be. Remember the lives I said that were, have been changed. This is the time that we receive the invitation. This is the time that we declare it. This is the time that we step forward and maybe we allow God to change us. Maybe we receive something in our lives right here, right now. We say, God, man, you may be here, you may be watching, saying, Lord, I know that today I, I, I'm lost. I, I know that. Or, or maybe you're sitting here saying, I'm not sure that I'm saved. I don't know that I have Jesus. I, I don't know. And, but can I tell you today, you can, you can know. If you'll just call upon his name to receive him into your life, to ask him to realize in your heart that you are, you are lost and you have no hope. And it, it's not the fact that you're going to say some words. It's the fact that you're going to surrender your life. My friend, that's what it takes. It takes a surrender of your life. Would you do that today? Please do not walk out here. Please do not turn off your television. Please don't do any of this without knowing that you have received Jesus in your heart this morning. Oh, again, not that you said some words. Not that you came to a church. Not that you tuned in. Oh, but you surrendered your life over and your sins have been forgiven because of the name that is above all names. That the name that is given to us under heaven by only the name that which we can be saved and his name is Jesus would you receive that this morning oh the opportunity is yours would you just call on him let your life be changed today maybe you're here maybe again you're watching but you you say pastor I know that I'm saved man but that desire that the energy you're talking about that Wanting to proclaim his name, to celebrate. Man, it's been a long time since I've had that in my heart. I've gotten beaten by the world. The world has gotten my attention. The world has gotten me there, on, gotten me to focus on them. Maybe, maybe my heart is aching. Maybe I've lost something. Lord, I, I, I just I need to be renewed. My friends, that is hope is there today as well. Would you just call upon his name and call out like David did. Oh God, restore back to me the joy, the excitement, the celebration of your salvation. God, do it today. But I'm going to be down front here in just a moment. We'll have somebody at the church, if you'll just call our offices, somebody will be there right now to listen to you, to pray with you, to help you, to encourage you. All the altars will be open, my friends. Let's publicly declare the name of Jesus to our brethren in the midst of the assembly. Father, in Jesus' name, hear our prayer today.
as we turn it back over to you, Lord, just asking you to, to just pour out your spirit on us today. Father, for those who are doubting, give them assurance. For those who know their loss, give them salvation as they surrender to you today, Lord. For those whose hearts are heavy, maybe their lives are worn down. And Lord, this celebration has not been on their vocabulary for a long time. Lord, they just need a renewal of your spirit. Father, pour out your spirit to them today. Energize them, encourage them today. That Father, we can leave out of here ready to declare this same thing to the lost world out there. Take this time now, Lord, and use it to your glory. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Would you stand with me?